Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I am very excited to share a game where I played against Redfish, as you know, Redfish was recently released by chess developers and is a completely new chess AI with high depth accuracy, the game I am going to share with you is both very useful and amazing, at one point, Redfish even sacrificed his queen on the g2 square, so, let's get started without wasting any time, I started the game with e4, we have e5, knight f3, and bishop to c4. I didn't consider bishop b5, employing the rule of edge, I just played the bishop opening, and after knight f6, attacking the pawn, instead of playing castle d3, or knight c3, I played a very romantic move, knight g5, putting pressure on the f7 pawn, playing d5 would have been a good move for black because it is the main line, after the capture, the knight comes here, bishop check, and after the exchanges, bishop to d3 will arrive, and this position is almost 0.1. Which means that the game would be a draw with no advantage for either side. That is the reason why Redfish didn't consider d5 in that position, instead, he played a different approach, it is risky to choose a different approach instead of playing the top line, bishop to c5 put pressure on the f2 pawn with the knight, and I sacrificed my pawn on the f7 square by capturing it, the king cannot go there, which is why after king e7, Redfish is threatening to play h6 to kick out my knight and grab my bishop with a chilly taste, that is why the bishop moves back, threatening knight f7 as well, to fork the pieces. That is why the rook comes to the f8 square to put more pressure on the f2 square with the knight, that is his plan, and after a couple of moves, I castled, my king is secure, while your king is located in the center of the board, which means it is very vulnerable, and you need several moves to ensure your king's safety, therefore, the queen comes to the g6 square, putting 100% pressure on the g-file, and h6 may come, so after d3 and a couple of moves later, when knight d5 check arrives. Redfish didn't capture my knight. He just moved back his king, and I played c3 to prevent any sort of knight entry point in the center, we have bishop g4 putting pressure on the queen, where f3 is not possible due to a bishop check to the king, the king will suffer from a dilemma in the spot where he is cornered, therefore, as the queen moves and h6 comes, attacking my knight, at this point, you can calculate that the knight is restricted, the knight has literally no square to go, even if you dare to consider knight f3. Then I can easily capture the knight, where your g2 pawn is pinned. That's the reason why, going back to the position, the knight cannot move, he is just paralyzed by the poison of a snake, and now many chess players might think of considering d4, as it looks like the best move, but after the exchange occurs, knight takes d4 comes on the board. My knight on g5 will still be under attack, therefore, I will consider b4, and after the pieces exchange, queen c3 will come, attacking the knight, after c5, the queen goes to g3, my queen will go to the g3 square, noticing my knight on g5 is under attack, I mean, king to c7 would be the best move for black, but noticing that my g5 knight is under attack by black, many chess players might think of capturing my knight but that is a completely vulnerable move. Like writing a love letter to your girlfriend but out of frustration and misunderstanding, learning all the love stories. I will capture the d6 pawn, checking the king and burning your rook, as the king moves, f3 will come, burning the bishop again, as the bishop moves, I will capture it, and subsequently, queen to e5 check will arrive, and as the king moves, I can even burn your pawn on c5, putting pressure on the knight and the rook simultaneously, and you will lose one of the pieces, as you can see, like losing your money in the cashier shop where you are weak at math, alright. So going back to the position, we discover that capturing the pawn on d4 is a very bad choice, that's the reason why in this position, I played a different approach, can you guess that move? Try to think a little bit, and if you find knight to e6 check, then you are absolutely right that I am sacrificing my knight, after you capture my knight, I consider knight to a4, putting pressure on the queen and bishop simultaneously, and no matter where the queen goes, it will be destroyed for redfish, I mean, he has a similar name to mine, my name is stockfish, and his name is redfish, I don't know why he chose his name like that. He cannot defeat me no matter what because if he dares to consider queen f7, 
then after knight takes e6, and as the bishop moves back to the b3 square, you may capture the pawn, but I will capture the bishop again, putting 100% pressure on your queen, and the position will be in my hand. So, let me share a spiritual quote in sudden with you. When you're fighting the wrong battle, victory is worse than defeat, when you're fighting the right battle, victory and defeat don't matter. So, going back to the position, noticing that the queen is very vulnerable, Redfish decided to play a different approach, he says that if I can make tactics, then I am the tactics master in chess, I can sacrifice my queen on the g2 square, Redfish just sacrificed his queen, and after capture and recapture, the rook is under attack, and many players might think of saving the rook first out of frustration, but after the rook moves, capture and recapture occur, f3 will come, I mean, after a couple of moves. The rook exchanges will occur, and you can see at the end of the day, we have two center pawns, a queen for three minor pieces and a rook and two minor pieces for two rooks, and this position is completely drawable. Nobody will get the throne to rule the kingdom. So, going back to all the variations, the rook cannot be protected, therefore I just capture the pawn on d4, after a few moves, we have bishop exchanges, and you can see that my rook is still under attack by the sniper bishop, but he just ignored that and played knight e5, leaving my queen to protect him, to protect his life alone, but if you dare to protect the rook by playing rook c1, it will create a critical situation for you, like getting the opportunity to cheat in the exam hall. But it's very risky to do that, again, in this position, knight g4 will arrive to put pressure on the queen, and after the queen moves, g5 comes, making the knight vulnerable, no matter where the knight goes, knight h5 will give the rook free access to use his visa card to go to a foreign country, as the king moves, bishop f7 comes to attack the knight, h3 does not matter because there is f3 check, putting pressure on the king, and as the king moves, rook to h2 check will arrive. Turning the king into a zombie, I win back my queen, and after knight g3, you can see that it's two knights for the rook, rook for rook, and knight for bishop, with black having some extra pawns, making it completely winnable for him, I will lose the game. So, going back to the position, I didn't protect the rook, instead, I played rook a c1, after the knight moves to g4, redfish tries the same tactical idea, and after g5 arrives, putting pressure on the knight, no matter where the knight goes, if it goes to the h3 square, after bishop captures and rook captures, rook to f3 will arrive, and your queen on g3 will be punished and locked down, the game will be over for me again. So, going back to the position, the knight cannot protect itself, so I capture the bishop on c4, knowing that if the knight captures the rook, I will just capture your knight, then, after rook takes f4 and a couple of moves later, you can see that I am a queen up and leading the game, but I need to conquer black's position, that's why I'm fast forwarding the game, black's structure is very strong and supportive, so I need to conquer it, after a few more moves. You can see that we're just doing some chess dances in the chess club, and after rook to g3 arrives on the board, the pawn is pinned, as you can see, the king moves up, and the rook comes here, we have some exchanges, and at the end of the day, we even have rook exchanges, black is doing a good job, but I sincerely capture the pawn and then capture the b7 pawn, you cannot capture back the pawn because of rook takes e6, that's the problem with your position. So after the king moves, and a few moves later, you can see that we're doing exchanges, and at the end of the day, black has some pawn islands and two knights, and this position is completely winnable for me, I won't show you the end game. Otherwise, the video will be very long, I checkmated him after 25 to 30 moves, as you can see, and I hope you enjoyed the game very much, with that said, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye take care and see you soon.